Are you fearful about something and maybe it's holding you back? Well, I really want to talk about fear today because it's a topic that comes up again and again and just in a general sense of what we mean by fear and maybe how to move through it a little bit. And if you stay until the end, I'll have an extra point for you then as well. Now, if you want me to talk about a particular topic on this podcast, then just drop in the poll below and uh, give me your feedback on what you'd like me to talk a little bit more about. So I've had fear in my life. <laughs> Surprise, I'm a human being. <laughs> we all have fear, right? Now, sometimes I see people just say they're fearful of something. It's great. It's good. The first step is truth, right? That's good. Sometimes people don't. You can tell they are, though. All right. Now, we all have fears. People will say things like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just waiting on... I'm thinking about doing this, but yeah, I'm just really, really busy at the moment. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really busy, but I can't quite do it at the moment. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's not the right time when they actually want something, right? And there's actually a fear beneath that. So it really varies. Now, sometimes people hide it, like I say. The thing is, what I've learned is, and I've, I've been guilty of doing that, right? I've, I'll admit my own stuff. It was just like, I've done things like, years ago, I was like, yeah, I'm not ready to go out dating again, which was rubbish. It was just like, I was scared getting rejected again. Or saying things like, oh yeah, I'm not ready to give my talk yet, which is just the fear of public speaking, which is a very common one for people. I've seen that in Toastmasters, which is a public speaking thing all the time. People go for the first one, and they'll be like, yeah, I'm just watching this week. No, you're not. You're just scared of getting up there and talking, right? So sometimes people will mask their fears, right? And the first step is being truthful and being owning your truth because you, once you say your truth, you're able to move forward and you're able to do something about it. Now, obviously, sometimes people are honest about what their fears and they don't move forward. So we're going to go a little bit into that as well. Fear can keep us alive, though. It's not always a bad thing, right? If I don't get fearful of someone with a weapon in the street walking very fast towards me in an empty place, I'm probably not going to live, right? Because the fear will allow me to run faster, it'll kick chemicals into my body, and then I'll be able to get out of there or scream for help or whatever, right? Well, hopefully, obviously. Um, it can keep, you know, it keeps you... <laughs> say there's a sea full of sharks right and you're on a boat right fear is going to stop you jumping off that boat for a swim probably if you're sensible unless you're like shark man or whatever right or shark woman i don't know or shark person right so fear in that case is a good thing right <laughs> it's keeping us alive right there's other times though that it can completely destroy our lives like when I say destroy, like hold us from moving forward and we'll get stuck in the same cycles and it just doesn't feel good. Maybe you felt that. I certainly have. Like I've not progressed in areas, you know, not spoken to people I wanted to speak to um, or not like progressed to the job that I've wanted to. Right. So how's it helping you? So let's go through uh, some steps on to moving through fear because there's different kinds of fears. You've got like fear of rejection, fear of judgment, um, fear of not being enough. Um, and the deep one, I believe, is the fear of not being lovable, therefore being abandoned. And whoa, that hits home with me, definitely. Like, that's been a fear of my, <laughs> big fear in my life. So the first thing is tracing the true fear. I was just touching on that a little bit there. You know, you could be like, like my mentor says there's the fear of boredom, right? But some people like put off like boring tasks. I've certainly done that many times, many, many times. You know, the typical one is like, oh, yeah, but, you know, people keep put, put, put off paying their taxes. And I've said before, I, that's weirdly something I actually quite enjoy <laughs> working it out. I love my spreadsheets and numbers. I've got a bit of background of that kind of like mathematical side of things as well. So, uh, but like there's other things like if, if someone asked me to research about something that like no interest in me, oh, I will put it off as long as I can. <laughs> I've had to catch myself and really work on that, right? or something just seems like a boring task, it's hard, right? 
the thing is what I've learned is like boredom's often not the true fear. Like there's the fear of boredom. It's usually something for me that I've dug deeper. It's like the fear of not understanding it. Therefore that's, that's like stupidity. Therefore that's the fear of not being enough. And therefore that puts me at risk of, you know, survival. It's crazy how the brain works. So getting really truthful on the fear, right? Is the first step being really honest. It may take a little bit of digging, a little bit of journaling. And then the second one is once you're aware of that, and on the first one, I'd also say looking at actually what that's going to cost you and then fearing that. So the fear of regret, the fear of losing out on something else. Like then when you start looking at actually what you could lose, that then we can start looking at the action because you've got to understand what your true fear is first. And you can, you can get yourself someone to help you as well. You get yourself a coach that they're really going to be able to help you dig deep, a really good coach. The second one, now you might say, oh, I don't want to pay for a coach. Well, do you want to pay for a coach or do you want to pay with time and suffering for years of fear? And you think you're going to figure out, but you don't, right? Just questions you. The second one is small steps, small steps, making small actionable steps, right? People often think, right, I'm scared of heights. I, I did a presentation on this the other day and I, I use this example. I'm scared of heights. The first thing you do is probably not going to do a skydive, is it? Right. <laughs> because that's, you're just going to be too para, like, paralyzed to do anything. You'd be like, <gasps> you freeze up, right? So making small steps. So maybe just walk up one floor in a building, right? For example, that's a really good first step. And then praising yourself every single step you make, because that is progress. The third thing, context over content. And what I mean by that is often when we look at something, it's always the meaning we give it. Um, say, for example, I look, let's use public speaking. I'll, I'll just think here like a couple of presentations in recent, like, and did one in person the other day. And it was, went to a group. And what I'm thinking about is the excitement of delivering to them and finishing the speech and being able to walk off feeling good about myself. That's the meaning I'm giving to that speech. Someone else, and I've spoken to many people, the meaning they give to it is like fear of embarrassing himself or oh, could be humiliating. Oh, what if they'll look at me? What if I like get caught in my words? That's the meaning and the context they're putting over the same situation, but it's context. So when you realize what context, what meaning you're giving to something, that can be a really good awareness. And then ask yourself, what other meaning could I make? Now, of course, like there may be a bit of work to work through that meeting. Again, that's why getting a coach or someone to assist you. And when I keep talking about coaching, I'm not a coach. I don't offer that as a service. Um, but I really encourage it because it's done world of wonders for me. I used to be a coach, but it, it does a world of wonders and just speeds up by years, decades, <laughs> your learning journey in some cases and being able to grow. And can you really put a price on that? No. Right. So I've got a final point for you as well um, on fear that I think is really, really helpful. I want to mention again, though, that if you want a, a specific topic to be talked about on this podcast, drop in the poll below as well and let me know what you'd like me to talk more on. OK, the final thing I'm going to just touch on is your environment of people you're around. If you're I talk, I've talked about this one before, but it's it's, it's really important to reemphasize so many some points just so it really gets stuck into your head is. If you're around a bunch of people who are just don't do anything, they don't really take any adventure, you, you're going to adapt to that. On the other side, on the good side, if you're with a bunch of people that are really going to push you out of your comfort zone, that are really going to be like, oh, let's go do a fire walk or let's go like have some conversations in public with people um, and just socially get out there, then you're going to adapt to that as well. So just being very cautious about your company is really going to help you through your fears as well. So that's what I've got for you today. I appreciate you for being here. And remember to leave with your heart, not with fear.